Okay. So now, class, we had an intro about the menstrual cycle. Now we're going to go through and explain uh, what happens at each phase and what what is hap- what's going on and what's talking to each other and how do we coordinate this. Um, it would seem like there's a lot of um, notes and pathway and graphs, but really, if you look at it, it is one kind of one concept that changes to allow for different things to happen at each phase. Okay, so keep that in mind as you learn this that look, think about what is the goal of each phase and how is the body achieving that. So if you look at the notes, you'll see that I have usually the days explained um, and then I will draw HPO axis with the steps numbered and then I have a graph to show how those all come together. So there you want to look at all three of those to see how they um, come together. So let's for this first one, let's start off with the graph. So if you look at the graph, I boxed it in pink here. And what we're looking at is the first half of the follicular phase. So follicular means follicle, pertaining to the follicle. So we're looking at pre antral phase follicle. And what that means is that it is the follicle is at primary stage before they form this antrum. So we're not going to be in this stage until the follicle forms an antrum in the secondary stage. So this is really primary follicle stage. Okay, so that's called the preantral phase. And, the, and this is called the ovarian. So in the ovary, these are the ovarian phases. And then in the uterus, these are the uterine phase. So what's happening in the ovary, in the ovarian phase, and what's happening in the uterus in the uterine phase. So when you are, when the ovary has primary follicles or pre follicles, what's actually happening in the uterine phase is that it is menstruating. So why is it menstruating? Uh, so the reason why it's menstruating is that primary follicles do not make much, of, if at all, of the hormone estrogen and progesterone. So when the hormone is really low, as you can see here, the uterus is no longer supported to grow and the blood supply that is from the progesterone to support that growth is cut off. There's no longer that, that support. So without estrogen and progesterone to support the growth of the uterus, then that uterine lining that grew for that month will then die and shed. So that's the menstruation, the menstrual flow. Okay, so that's what's going on because the primary follicle does not make those hormones. So why are the females menstruating? What's going on is the body is really preparing for a second cycle, a next new cycle. And in order to prepare for the new cycle, the follicles has to grow. Okay, so to promote that follicle to grow, what we need is an amount of FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. So the follicle stimulating hormone is going to be released in that cycle and the cycle will only end if the FSH has pro- pushed for the follicle to grow and then one of the follicle becomes a secondary um, intra follicle. Okay, so if you look at that graph, there's a lot to make sense. Um, sometimes it's a lot easier to tell a story and go through this HP axis. So I'll draw a new one and follow along, but what I'm saying and what are, what's going on is actually illustrated also here. Okay, so you can go back and forth to follow along. So in the HPO axis of the pre antral phase, so we're going to look at HPO. Okay, and we're looking at pre antral So where do you start, right? Where do you start um, drawing these HPO axes? So one key idea to remember is that we are trying, the reproductive um, system is trying to have a fertilized egg and implant that egg, okay? So in order for that to happen, the egg has to communicate with the whole body what it's doing. When does it need to grow? When does the uterus need to prepare for implantation? So really the communication, the control comes from how fast the follicle is growing and what's going on with the follicle. So we will always start the HPO with the follicle because we need to know where it's at. So in the ovary, at this stage, at step one, we have a primary follicle, which is the preantral follicle. Okay, 
So we have a primary follicle. And the primary follicle is a baby follicle, itty bitty baby follicle. Okay, itty bitty baby follicles do not make much estrogen. So except two, we're going to put that that itty bitty follicle is going to make very little estrogen. So estrogen is low. For the sake of just being consistent, progesterone is also low, right? Your itty bitty baby follicle is not going to make either one of those. Okay, so then the estrogen is going to communicate to your brain, say, oh, in my ovary, I have an itty bitty follicle. So that's the communication that is sending to the hypothalamus in negative feedback. So that low estrogen is then telling the brain that, oh, I have a little baby follicle, itty bitty primary follicle. So what am I going to do is I'm going to stimulate the whole cycle to make sure that that follicle can grow. And the communication is through GnRH. The GnRH is going to be released, so we're going to increase GnRH at step four. The increase in GnRH is going to increase the stimulation on the pituitary gland. Okay, so the pituitary gland sensing that increase in GnRH is not going to release FSH at higher level. GnRH goes up, FSH goes up. So now that's going to increase the stimulation, follicle stimulation. Um, on the ovary, okay? So step five was FSH going up. Then the final step at step six, because FSH went up and is working on the ovary, the follicle will develop, okay? Follicle development. So it's gonna keep on going in the cycle until the follicle develops into an antro follicle or a, a secondary follicle. So, um, what is going on in the uterus is that estrogen progesterone is low, so the uterine lining, the endometrial lining, is no longer supported. So the uterus, what's happening is actually menstruation. So you're in the menstrual phase when the follicles in the ovary are primary follicles. Okay, so you can follow along and see how that happens. Again, when the follicle reaches the antro follicle, here, antro follicle, we are now then in the in the second in the second phase, which is the antro phase. So you have this antro, antrum, right? So once you have that secondary follicle, then you're in the antro phase. So the intra follicle phase, one dominant follicle. So there's a number of primary follicles here racing to become this dominant follicle, but only one will win, okay? So there might be 10 to 15 here, but only one will be the winner, okay? And develops an antrum and becomes the dominant follicle, okay? That dominant follicle is the winner now. So now you do not need to... Um, you do not need to stimulate the follicles to grow anymore. You already have a dominant a follicle, okay? So FSH will go down, okay? This will prevent the other 10 to 15 from becoming dominant. But as the follicle grows, estrogen, so this is estrogen, will go up. And when estrogen goes up, the uterus will grow. Okay, so there's a lot to piece together, and sometimes I really like piecing it together actually with using um, HP access because I feel like that tells a story um, a lot easier than the graph. Okay, so let's do the HPO access. So, again, here's the story right? We have the hypothalamus, pituitary, and the ovary. And step one, we're now in the antro phase, right? Antro phase. So the next phase here. The antro phase tells us that we have a secondary follicle with an antrum. A secondary follicle is bigger, much bigger. Okay, this follicle can make hormone, and we'll talk about how in just a minute. Okay, so step two, estrogen, I'm just going to abbreviate so that's easier for me to write digitally, will go up. Progesterone is still not made. Progesterone is made after ovulation, so we'll just um, remember that for later. Well, with the higher estrogen, that's going to communicate to the hypothalamus that, oh, I have a secondary dominant follicle now. I have a dominant follicle, okay? So that communication 
from that secondary focus telling the hypothalamus, okay, well, now we don't need to stimulate the ovary anymore. So that's going to be step four, where GnRH is going to go down. So now the stimulation on GnRH on the pituitary is going to go down. So if that goes down, the FSH will be released at a lower amount. Okay. Now FSH is low, so it's not stimulating the ovary follicle anymore. So as step six, number is five, as step six, okay, we have a dominant follicle, so then we're going to stop other pre antra follicle growth. So we're going to stop the other follicle from becoming dominant. We only want one. We have one dominant follicle. This is the reason why um, fem uh, female humans tend to have one baby. Okay, Having twins is relatively rare and even more rare. Um, before modern medicine and really good nutrition, okay? So the higher estrogen in the uterus is promoting the growth or the proliferation of the endometrium. Okay, so that is the intraphase, and here we're in the pro proliferative phase in the uterus and the uh, intraphase in the Ovary. So these phase names really describe what's going on. Antrophase, antrophollicle. Okay, peripheral phase, growth of the endometrium. Okay, you just have to understand what's happening in the uterus and what's happening in the ovary. Okay, I'm going to stop explain uh, this video here with the explanation of the follicular phase, which is the pre phase and then the and then the antral phase. Um, I will continue with the video on explaining ovulation and luteal phase. Um, and then the next video will also explain how does the antrophollicle make estrogen. Okay, so I'm going to make stop right here and then you can watch the next video on estrogen production and then the following video on uh, how to make, um, how to make uh, the luteal phase.